We have been looking at the interpretive rule exception from the APA Section 553 Notice and Comment Procedures. Section 553 itself states the exception, but whether a rule is legislative and required to have been made by notice and comment, or interpretive and not so required, is itself a matter of interpretation. A Seventh Circuit case, Hochter v. USDA, sheds light on the issue from another angle, in an opinion written by one of the brightest lights on the appellate bench, Judge Richard Posner. Judge Posner is pictured here with his big cat, if not as big a cat as those concerned in the case. Let's start with the statute that gives the Secretary of Agriculture the authority to regulate how really big cats are kept. The Animal Welfare Act states that the Department shall formulate standards to govern the humane handling, care, treatment, and transportation of animals by dealers. And these standards must include minimum requirements for handling, housing, feeding, watering, and sanitation. Notice here that the Act is directed to the USDA, not to dealers. The USDA is to formulate standards. The standards are to govern humane care. We should ask, does the statute implicitly also impose a duty of humane, humane care on dealers, which binds even in advance of promulgation of USDA standards? Hold on to that thought, because the USDA did promulgate a standard, the Structural Strength Standard, by going through the APA Section 553 Notice and Comment Rulemaking process. The final rule states, the facility must be constructed of such material and of such strength as appropriate for the animals involved. The indoor and outdoor housing facilities shall be structurally sound and shall be maintained in good repair to protect the animals from injury and to contain the animals. Dealers in certain exotic animals, like really big cats, must house them in a facility of this description. It is up to USDA inspectors to check out such facilities. Perhaps because it is meant to cover such a wide variety of different exotic animals, the structural strength regulation is not very specific. What is appropriate housing for a cobra or a baboon might not be appropriate for a big cat. To assist its inspectors in the field, the USDA issued this memorandum regarding the structural strength regulation. All dangerous animals, defined to include among members of the cat family lions, tigers, and leopards, must be inside a perimeter fence at least eight feet high. An eight-foot fence at a minimum. This memorandum was not promulgated by APA Section 553 Notice and Comment Rulemaking Procedures, although the structural strength regulation it refers to had been promulgated after notice and comment. The stage is now set. Before Hochter started his exotic animal business, he got advice from a USDA inspector that a six-foot fence would suffice. He built a six-foot fence. The following year, the memorandum went around to field inspectors, and on the next inspection visit, Hochter was cited for having a six-foot instead of an eight-foot fence. But he did not want to go to the trouble and expense of raising the height of the fence to comply. On repeated reinspections, Hochter got repeated citations. Eventually, the department sanctioned Hochter, and he sought judicial review. The court states at the outset, the parties agree that unless the rule requiring a perimeter fence at least eight feet high is a valid interpretive rule, the sanction for violating it was improper. Notice that the agency action that is challenged is the sanction and the agency's apparent stipulation that the legality of the sanction depends solely on the validity of the eight-foot rule set out in the memorandum. We should pause to ask whether the agency was wise to stipulate to this. After all, the sources of authority to sanction Hochter are not limited to the eight-foot fence memorandum. There is the statute, 
USD shall formulate standards to assure humane care by dealers. The structural strength reg. The facility must be appropriate to contain the animals, as well as the dangerous animals memorandum itself, requiring an eight-foot fence. We might have a different case if the citation had been worded differently. Mr. Hochter, you are required under 7 U.S.C. sections 2131 at SEC to house animals humanely. Your fence is not in compliance. Or, Mr. Hocker, Hochter, you were required under 9 CFR 3.125A to have an appropriate enclosure. Your fence is not in compliance. The USDA's citation invoked a structural strength rule, but it read it as if it incorporated the eight-foot fence rule, which is explicit only in the dangerous animal memorandum. Judge Posner observes, Maybe there is some implicit statutory duty of containment that Hochter might have been thought to have violated, even if there were no rule requiring an eight-foot high perimeter fence. We need not decide. The only ground on which the department defends sanctioning Hochter for not having a high enough fence is that requiring an eight-foot high perimeter fence for dangerous animals is an interpretation of the department's own structural strength regulation. Why did USDA decide to hang its hat on this one particular peg? Is it hoping to get the benefit of Seminole Rock Hour difference if the issue is narrowly framed as an agency interpretation of its own rule? The court cites Stenson versus U.S., which simply repeats Seminole versus Hour, Seminole Rock and Hour. The administrative interpretation is of controlling weight unless it is plainly erroneous or inconsistent with a regulation. If that was the USDA's thought, it may have confused two issues. One question is, insofar as the eight-foot fence rule interprets the structural strength reg, is the rule plainly erroneous or inconsistent with the reg? In other words, is the interpretation substantively plainly erroneous under our and Seminole Rock? If this is the only question, then the agency is in a strong position, but not so fast. Judge Posner is aware that interpretation goes on all the time. He writes, the agency enforcing a statute cannot avoid interpreting it. Whether a rule is interpretive in the sense of the APA Section 553 exception is a further question. Is the eight-foot fence rule an interpretive rule exempt from notice and comment? The further issue is whether the eight-foot fence rule is procedurally flawed. If this is a legislative rather than an interpretive rule, it is procedurally invalid. Again, we bump our heads against the question, what is an interpretive rule? Judge Posner explains, A rule is an interpretive rule only if it can be derived from what it interprets by a process reasonably described as interpretation. This may sound circular, but it is not. To get from adequate enclosure to eight-foot fence requires more than the skills of a lawyer or a judge. It requires more even than the skills of a veterinarian or a zoologist. It requires a decision about where to draw a line rather than an insight in discerning where a line already lies. This is conspicuously so where a quantitative standard is derived from a qualitative source which is what happened when eight foot was read out of a regulation that simply said adequate. This directs us to the following approach, which I recommend to you. Proceed as follows. Identify the precise language doing the interpreting and its source. Identify the precise language being interpreted and its source. Detail how the agency got from the language being interpreted to the language doing the interpreting. This will not always give you a decisive answer, but it will usually come close, within the ballpark, if not within eight feet. <laughs>